The tomb uh, referred to in the last poem, an Arundel tomb, is not at um, Arundel. It is a tomb of the Arundel family in Chichester Cathedral, and on it are the stone effigies of an earl and countess of the Arundel family, shown lying hand in hand in a way I've never seen in English church monumental sculpture anywhere else, and which I found extremely affecting. Side by side, their faces blurred, the Earl and Countess lie in stone, their proper habits vaguely shown as jointed armour, stiffened pleat, and that faint hint of the absurd, the little dogs under their feet. Such plainness of the pre-baroque hardly involves the eye until it meets his left-hand gauntlet still clasped empty in the other, and one sees, with a sharp, tender shock, his hand withdrawn, holding her hand. They would not think to lie so long. Such faithfulness in effigy was just a detail friends would see, a sculptor's sweet commissioned grace thrown off in helping to prolong the Latin names around the base. They would not guess how early in their supine stationary voyage the air would change to soundless damage, turn the old tenantry away. How soon succeeding eyes begin to look, not read. Rigidly they persisted, linked through lengths and breadths of time. Snow fell undated. Light each summer thronged the glass. A bright litter of bird calls strewed the same bone-riddled ground. And up the paths, the endless altered people came, washing at their identity. Now, helpless in the hollow of an unarmorial age, a trough of smoke in slow suspended skeins above their scrap of history, only an attitude remains. Time has transfigured them into untruth. The stone fidelity they hardly meant has come to be their final blazon and to prove our almost instinct almost true. What will survive of us is love.